Your meeting with us today really is helping us not only for today, but over the next several years. And what I mean by that is this five-year business plan that we're trying to put together is very, in some respects, aspirational in nature. What is it that we want to do as a city over time? And maybe we can't do it in any one single year, those snapshots uh, that the mayor re referred to, but between now and five years from now, what are the sorts of things that we want to be doing? Well, we can't ascertain that, or it's harder for us to ascertain unless we have your input today. And so I thank you all for being here today. And frankly, I have a request, and I'll make the same request when we get to the closing comments later, to, uh, later this morning, and that is we've got two more of these one in the Northland and one on the south side of the city. And um, hopefully if you will have enjoyed your time with us today, you'll tell your friends, because as you know, we have uh, more chairs here. We have more fruit here, so, uh, and, and we're not gonna save it, I don't think, for those two events. So, so I'll, I'll uh, ask you to go ahead and take advantage of those things. But we really want to have not only your input, but as many people's input as we can get over the course of these next several weeks. So uh, again, thank you uh, for being here this morning. Uh, enjoy the game. Um, I think uh, you're going to be um, uh, very, enlightened in, with, in some respects as far as what we go through as part of the budgeting process, but I think there is also great opportunity there uh, with the input that you're going to provide. So thank you all very much. So what this process does is help us on the operating budget set. Where do we want to try to be in five years and what's the best way to get there? So from a city's perspective, I always use the analogy of you have three options. We'll never probably, the city of Kansas City, because of its size, because of its diverse input, diverse population, will never be a cigarette boat on the ocean to be able to turn on a dime and move and meet a need. Our goal is to be the Queen Mary or the QE2 that moves gracefully to achieve the uh, desired outcome. What we're trying to avoid is to be the Titanic two miles down. <laughs> And I think this is a process that allows us to do that. And that's why your input, your input, your ideas, your suggestions about what are our priorities and what could be moved away from or redirected over time, given the constraints that the mayor talked about. Moving this ship isn't easy and somebody's not gonna get all that they wanna do in order to accomplish other issues. So the best way to do that is to engage citizens early and ask them, what do we wanna be when we grow up, if you will. And I'm gonna have each member of our expert panel say who they are and what department they represent, what their role is. Good morning, everyone. Terry Leeds, Director for Water Services. We're uh, basically an enterprise department. We operate a water utility, a wastewater utility, and a stormwater utility. Good morning. My name is John Wood, uh, Director of Neighborhood and Housing Services Department. Uh, we're responsible for the HUD block grant program, animal control, regulated industries, code inspection, dangerous buildings, demolitions, and all the above. Thank you. I'm Sherry McIntyre, Director of Public Works. We take care of all the things when the right of way, so it's the roadways, it's the curbs, it's the sidewalks. We also pick up your trash and illegal dumping throughout the community. I'm Claude Page with City Planning and Development. We work with permits and inspections for buildings and other structures. We work with zoning, we work with economic development, we work with other programs like the Brownfields programs and really touch every part of the city. Good morning, I'm Randy Landis, I'm the finance director. We collect the money, we bank the money, we invest the money, we account for the money. <laughs> I'm Major Mark Francisco, I'm uh, the fiscal division commander for the police department, and I think everybody knows what we do. Uh, I'm Paul Berardi, I'm the director of fire and the fire chief. Uh, we are responsible for all of the uh, pre-hospital emergency medical care, fire suppression and technical rescue in the city, hazardous materials as well. My name is Benita Jones. I am the public information officer for the Kansas City, Missouri Municipal Court. We're the largest municipal court in the state. We process over 300,000 cases a year and contrary to popular belief, all of them are not traffic matters. Uh, we also have uh, domestic violence. Uh, we also have several specialty courts, drug court, mental health court, and veterans treatment court, as well as a truancy court. All of those uh, focus on treatment rather than incarceration. Um, we're going to get into game mode now. Are you all ready? Yeah. To get started, we're going to do a brief warm-up exercise. 
So for this brief and painless warm-up exercise, which is about the allocation of dollars, would you all please get a partner? Everybody get a partner. We're going to pass out to each twosome, we're going to give you uh, what represents $10 bills. So as soon as you get it between the two of you, would you count to be sure that you have no more and no less than $10? Okay, here's your task, everyone. You will have 30 seconds in which to allocate the $10 between you, but there are rules. You may not evenly divide the money. And you cannot uh, divide some of the money now and expect to negotiate the rest of the money later. So please assume that this is real money and that if you don't come up with a, with a solution by the end of the 30 seconds, we will take that money away from you. So you have 30 seconds in which to divide the money. You may begin. Time is up. Let's just hear from a few of you about how you divided the money. Who would, who, how did you all divide the money? How did you do it here? Um, we were very diplomatic. We chose to uh, divide based on seniority. Seniority, okay. How did you two divide it? Flipped a coin. We flipped a coin. Flipped yeah. a coin, interesting. All right, how did you two do it? I told him what I wanted. <laughs> Um, but here, what I wanted to know is, did you discuss priorities with your partner? See, you need to, see, that's what the city does. We have to talk about what are priorities. And you obviously can't make priorities unless you get good information. And that's why we brought the expert panel here for you today. You've got to get good information in order to make decisions. You didn't have hardly any time. You only had 30 seconds. But you need to convince your partner that your needs are greater than theirs. And that is, in fact, a good lead-in to a brief video that we're going to show you. Because when we have a limited pot of dollars, and we've got all sorts of people, all the different departments in the city are saying, wait a minute, my needs are greater than your needs. My needs are greater. We need to fund this. And we've only got a limited amount of money. But here are some of the voices from department directors that we hear from. And we want you to hear some of their reasons that their needs are important. If we don't have adequate funding, we don't run the traffic signals very well, and that creates accidents. If we don't keep the traffic or the signs up on the roadways, again, people don't know what the speed limits are. They don't know what the curves are coming ahead. It's a safety issue. So there's a lot of funding needs that we have in public works that just is a matter of safety requirements. Without the adequate funding to pick up the trash, we would be a very dirty looking city. And who would go to the curb? Who would pick up the trash if we weren't having adequate funding to pick that up? Without funding, public works and our city does not function. When we do our job well, you don't know we're there. I urge you to support the finance administration portion of the, the annual budget. Finance administration includes finance, city manager's office, human resources, human relations, and general services. This is the glue that holds the entire government together. Uh, the other departments can't do what they do without all of our support, so I urge you to support that portion of the budget and ensure that it's funded appropriately. The Kansas City Fire Department responds to over 110,000 calls for service each year. We have a responsibility to respond and mitigate every request for emergency medical ambulance service, citizen rescue, report of hazardous materials, and every building fire across 317 square miles of Kansas City. I encourage you to continue your support for the fire department, for our life safety efforts, uh, for the citizens and visitors of Kansas City. In this real world exercise, the city government has limited resources. So limited, in fact, that your table will be given $1,000 in imaginary play money. We don't have actual dollar bills this time across five goals with many programs within each goal. Your table will need to cut $50, five zero, from the $1,000 and list the top five programs in each goal. You'll have 30 minutes to complete this activity. <laughs> Thank you.
It's really good to see all the people here participating and having their debates at their tables about what to move, what to do, and the conversations that are most important are when they start explaining why they think certain programs ought to be more funded or less funded than others. It's a very interesting process. It's one of those things that we do all the time, but with citizen input, we're able to do it more effectively and prioritize more aligned with their desires. The dollar amounts we cut from each of the five areas, so we cut five dollars from finance and government or governance, uh, twenty-two dollars from neighborhoods and healthy communities, and the specific new line item numbers are down here. So parks maintenance down to nineteen, capital for parks down to eighteen, zeroed out zoo, KC museum, f and facilities, <laughs> and uh, then uh, hospital uh, spending went down to forty. Uh, and then under planning, zoning, and economic development, down $9 for the whole column. Uh, and then specific new dollar amounts, visit KC down to $6 and zeroed out Truman Sports Complex. Um, and public safety uh, down 14 for the whole column. And then individual line items now $7 for fleet maintenance, uh, $3 for professional development, $3 for fire marshal, $2 for fire chief, and $29 for police administration. One thing we did find out is that the uh, police, um, what was it? Uh, the, uh, no, the um, retirement pension. Retirement. The pension is actually included in the administrative column, and, but it's not the whole amount. So that we're was just a. Sorry about that. We're very sorry about that. <laughs> we found that out after the cut. Um, and then transportation and infrastructure, we made zero cuts. Um, actually, we made a cut, but we increased the funding for the ATA. Surprise from me. Uh, and uh, so parking went down to three dollars, and uh, then we listed out our favorites, of course. We're, we're, we took a dollar out of finance, nine out of neighborhoods, seven out of planning, 25 out of public safety, and eight out of transportation. And rather than talk about all the things we cut, we think it's more important to talk about priorities. Uh, down below, we listed a number of priorities like hospital services, uh, nuisance, code abatement, land bank, community centers under neighborhoods, under planning and redevelopment, visit Casey, planning, planning for the future, uh, you know, and planning for what we're doing now. Economic incentives, we still have to compete with other cities. Under public safety, violent crime was one of the big things. Uh, uh, police patrols, emergency services, youth outreach, and ambulance billing. With John at the table, you, you had to have to understand that. <laughs> he insisted, and we, we, we and Forstein said I caved in, so that's okay. As you know, we're going to have individual recordings of those of you who would like to speak to City Council and give your comment about what should be the city's greatest priority. It's another opportunity for you all to be heard, and we're going to give each person who comes over here 30 seconds in which to say what your name is, if there's anybody you represent, or if it's just you, and then you will tell them what your priority is for budgeting and why. Good morning, my name is Carol Thomas and I am from the Monarch Manor neighborhood at the site of the historic municipal stadium. First of all, I'm sure all the citizens of the city are concerned about the murder and crime rate and I would like to express that we have plenty of uh, security uh, from the police uh, of our neighborhoods. Hi, my name is Gerard Grimaldi. I live in South Kansas City in the 6th District, and I'm here representing my neighbors and also Truman Medical Centers. Top priority for a healthy community is a strong health care safety net. Hello, my name is Takesha Ford. I live within the Wendell Phillips neighborhood area that's located within the 3rd District, and I believe one of the most prioritized investments should be within our 3rd District youth, uh, their education. We have so many homeless youth that are sleeping within the parks, not getting education, and falling by the wayside. I'm Greg Lombardi with Legal Aid of Western Missouri. I believe that the city should be investing in the future, and a lot of that is working on urban core issues, dealing with abandoned properties, vacant properties, and giving economic development opportunities in the urban core. Okay, so my name is Brian Stalder. I'm from the Indian Mountain Neighborhood Association, and I think that uh, crime prevention and crime intervention um, is our top priority because we can uh, spend a lot of money uh, bringing people to the city and letting them know how cool Kansas City is, but if people don't feel safe here or if we get a bad reputation for crime, uh, people aren't going to want to stay. 
Hi, I am Melba Taylor at Victory in Christ Home Ownership Program Endeavors, and for short, we call it Big Hope. And of course, our priority is neighborhood preservation and revitalization for the inner city. I'm Sandy Sexton, representing Ruskin Heights Homes Association, which consists of 1,800 homes in South Kansas City. One of my priorities would be basic services such as the bulky and leaf pickup, um, and also trash services. My name is Tracy G. Lewis, and I would like Kansas City to be improved by cleaning up all the abandoned houses, picking up all the oversized bulky items off the streets, and just making our city more beautiful and making more activities for our youth after hours. Thank you. Well, I'm Troy Schulte, City Manager for Kansas City, Missouri, and on behalf of the city, I'd like to thank you all for taking the time out of your busy schedules to participate in our citizen budget workshops. These processes, these your ideas, your suggestions, your willingness to go on camera and tell us how we can make this city better are vitally important as we build the city of tomorrow. So on behalf of the city of Kansas City, thank you. We're, we look forward to your, your efforts in the future and can't thank you enough for the work you provided for us today. Thank you.